All right, all right. LDBC, it is your boy Coach Shelton Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Shelton Harrison Combat Sports Show Live. Okay, guys, so, you know, here you look, you see in the screen, you see uh, Teddy Atlas, Stephen A. Smith. You know, you see them discussing the Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury fight. You see him. And, uh, God, before I even start this video, Stephen A. Smith hairline is damn near at his earlobe. Like, what the hell is that? Like, I think Stephen A. Smith has lost his battle with the hairline, man. I think he just need to go ahead and just call it a day and just get a bald head, man. It, 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 it's no use. He's not going to win. This guy's not going to win the hairline war. It's just not going to happen. Okay? I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe get, get some of those hair plugs and I, I don't know. I mean, make enough money, man. He could do it. Um, but maybe he don't want to be too obvious, man. You know, he don't want people to know that, you know, he really is putting these hair plugs in. And, you know, I, I don't think he want nobody to know that. Or, man, heck. You know, but anyway, let's talk about this. So, Teddy Atlas got on TV and he was like, yeah, you know, um, you know, Deontay Wilder, his form, you know, everything is just, it's horrible. You know, he's got very poor form. And, you know, for the most part, to me, Deontay Wilder, he's not the most technical fighter out there, but he's, he's, he's the most effective. And I, I tell you what I mean. He may not have, like, the footwork, you know, and I agree with Teddy. Teddy was talking about his footwork. I agree with that. I agree with the footwork issue, but Max Kellerman brought up a lot of good points. So Max Kellerman said, hey, you know what? Um, you know, people used to talk about how poorly, you know, Rocky Marciano's technique was. But, you know, uh, you know and people talked about that. And he said, uh, you know, I think in this situation, you know, Wilder, he's got poor technique, but it works for him. And Teddy was like, yeah, but see, Rocky had something. Rocky, you know, had a one-two, and it worked for him. And so Max was like, yeah, well, you know, Deontay Wilder, you know, has – has some pretty good abilities. He, he's got good defense, you know. He's a decent counterpuncher, you know. Deontay Wilder actually has some skills and is working for him. Though he may not be the most technical is what Max said, but he's got a lot of things in, in the toolbox that does work. And, you know, and also Deontay Wilder has a one-two. He's got a one-two. He put Fury down with a one-two. Like, I don't understand, man. See, it's this whole thing, man. It's this whole thing. I understand, you know, if you felt like Fury wanted to fight. That's, see, that's that's okay that's fine that's that, that that that's that's fair game to me but you know to say that the guy skill sets don't have anything he don't have no skill sets you know i just think that's just boring i think it's stupid it's stupid as hell okay i mean you don't knock out you know so teddy started talking about where his resume and he, he just started really talking about his resume like well you know he's fought a bunch of tomato cans and you know okay so maybe you know most of his opponents coming up at least in teddy's eyes we're not great opponents, but see, let's talk about the opponents that he got out of there. Let's talk about the guys. Let's talk about Ortiz. See, Teddy didn't really want to elaborate on how well Wilder did it against Ortiz. He didn't want to talk about that. See, he kept deflecting that question. And uh, Max kept saying, well, you know, yeah, but, you know, he fought a very dangerous fighter in Luis Ortiz, and he did well. You know, he did well against Ortiz. And, you know, Teddy was like, yeah, you know, but that's, that's the guy. But see, when the level of competition steps up, you know, then, you know, Wilder begins to struggle. You know, Teddy was just, he was saying that old, old stupid, stupid ass idiot stuff. But, you know, I look at this, man. You know, the fight was a draw. And I think people need to get out of their feelings. That's what it was. I thought Deontay Wilder had his moments. I thought he had his moments in the fight. You know, and I thought that the two knockdowns, you know, I don't know. I, I, I ain't seen too many fights where... The person get knocked down two times and they lose. I, I ain't seen it too many times. Okay. And, you know, it's like Teddy didn't want to give Deontay Wilder any credit. Okay. He didn't want to give Deontay Wilder any credit. Okay. And what the heck? T Teddy Atlas, old coconut ass head. You know, didn't want to give him no credit, man. None whatsoever. Like, okay, damn. Did the dude do anything right? Like, did he do anything right? That's, that's the thing that piss you off, man. See, the first thing that these guys, these boxing enthusiasts, the first thing, they always want to talk about the guy technique. But you're not talking about, hey, everybody that stood in front of him been dropped. Everybody that stepped in front of Deontay Wilder's face, he didn't put him to the canvas. Now, this coming from a guy, you know, with no technical skills, right? I mean, he took the lineal heavyweight champion, who we could argue and say he's probably the best technician in the heavyweight division in this era. Probably is. Deontay Wilder dropped this guy twice. I mean, could the great Klitschko do that? No. But Klitschko dropped Joshua, though, didn't he? <laughs> See, man, I tell you, man, more and more, the more and more I hear this now, man, the more and more I hear people speak on Deontay Wilder, it is really becoming evident, man. 
it's becoming evident. You know, I can even say, okay, Deontay Wilder, you know, he lost, but he did these things right. You know, I can understand that. But see, when you can't find nothing or, you know, every time, you know, people mention him, your, your job is to, you know, just try to, you know, downplay anything that he does right. You're a hater. You're a hater. May not even be a racist or a coon, but, but you're a hater. Okay, that's just what it is, man. These guys are wondering, people like Teddy, they wonder, you know, how does Deontay Wilder do the things that he do? You know, come on, man, this guy, you know, and, and they think the guy don't take the sport seriously. I, I think Deontay Wilder is ultra serious. And, you know, Teddy was like, yeah, he real arrogant because he think that he don't have to train hard in these other, other areas. He just, you know, think that all he got to do is throw the right hand and that's it. That's arrogant. And I'm like, maybe it's not arrogant. Maybe it's instinct that he go revert back to what's comfortable. Got to understand, man, this dude's a street fighter, man. I mean, Deontay Wilder, in, for all intents and purposes, could fight in the street. Hell, Deontay Wilder could have been an MMA fighter and a dominant one. He could have been. But I'm just saying, you know, what Deontay Wilder does a lot of times is, is instinctive. He's working on the stuff, man. And he even said himself, I didn't listen to my corner, man. You know, if I would have listened to my corner, I think I would have had a better performance. That's what he said. But I think a lot of the stuff that he does is instinctive. I don't think, I think he does. He works extremely hard. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, you're not going to put down, you know, 39 of these big dudes. You ain't going to put 39 of these dudes down, man, if you ain't working hard, if you're not doing anything. Like, Teddy trying to make it seem like Deontay Wilder is some lazy-ass dude, and all he do is sit back and eat uh, bonbons and Cheetos and just throw the right hand and train it. I mean, you know, when you listen to Teddy guys, uh, guys like Teddy Atlas, man, you got to start listening to him with a little bit of, like, you know, well, you got to take some of the stuff he say with a grain of salt, man. You just got to. Um Deontay Wilder does do stuff right. When he throws his straight right hand, when he set up, when he set the straight right hand up with a left jab, it's a thing of beauty, man. When he does it, that left hook that he's developed. Are you trying to tell me that 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 left hook's not good? That he's developing his left hand. See, and you know what? It was a right and then a left that dropped Fury. So please tell me, you know. So he's he's one dimensional, right? He's developing his left hand. Okay, he's developing his left hand. He's developing the actual skill in his left hand. Deontay Wilder is, he, he's an athlete, man. He's just an athlete. He's a freak of nature that he's able to do things, man. It's just, you, you take any other heavyweight, man, any other heavyweight in this era that do what Deontay Wilder do, but they're not as athletic, they're going to get knocked out. Okay, Fury is going to go in there and, and, and knock that person clean out. But see, with Deontay Wilder, he's so athletic it makes up for a lot of, of the shortfalls that he has. That's why Deontay Wilder has able, been able to do what he wants. You can say, well, you know, he's fought a bunch of bums. You know, and, and, it's, and this, this gets me too. We always want to talk about the bums that Deontay Wilder fought, right? You know, still don't nobody want to talk about AJ's lackluster uh, uh, resume, okay? And the only fight that people, you know, really talk to Tyson Fury about is, is that Klitschko win. But we always want to talk about Deontay Wilder resume. I mean, let's talk about Tyson Fury resume. How many talking about that? I mean, you know, he fought Chisor, but, you know, I mean, how do we rate Chisor? I mean, how do we rate him? He fought Klitschko. How do we rate him? He fought uh, Pinata. How do we rate him? Folks, I'm just saying, man. I don't think anybody in this, in this division has a really, like, you know, a resume that's just, you know, like a blazing resume. I don't think anybody has a blazing resume. I don't think anybody is just levels above everybody else when they come to resume. I think these guys, most of them somewhat are in the same boat. I think most of them, they're in the same boat when it comes to competition. I think Joshua, his only deal is he's, he's fought less. And he's accomplished the same thing in less time. But it don't matter, man. You know, we want to see the fight. We want to see the fight. We want to see all these fights. So I think these guys, to me, they're in the same boat. Okay, all of these guys. They're in the exact same boat. So what's the deal? But it's only one-sided when we talk about Wilder, man. I, you know, man, it just it gets so old, man. And people always say that Americans, man, Americans need to come in and Americans need to support each other. We need to root for the home team. But the home team don't like black fighters, man. And I'm just really, man, you, well, you got to bring race into it because I want to bring it into it. Okay, it's my video. I, you, look, you're going to make your own video or you shut the hell up. I bring race into it because I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. There is no love when it comes to the American black fighter. It's just, that's just how it is. And people, you know, when you tell people, see, I'm going to tell you, whenever you get these people that say bringing race into it, see, you, you, you as a person, okay, you as a white person, you don't want to be reminded of your racism. 
okay? And if you guys are coming, because most of you guys, uh, a lot of you guys are prejudiced, you're bigoted, and you're racist. And I'm just being real with y'all. That's just how it is. So take it or leave it. I don't care. Nobody told your goofy ass to watch the video. How about you get your monkey ass off the coach's video? How about that? Okay? That's an idea, right? Yeah, sure it is. Those stupid dudes be running around here acting like y'all, you know, y'all, uh, you know, God give to, you know, boxing or whatever. Guys ain't all that, man. You know, yeah, root for the home team, but the home team don't like black American fighters. Yeah. And even some of the booze that Deontay Wilder was getting. But, you know, of course, people say, well, that's just because there's a lot of UK fans in the crowd. But there are more Americans in the crowd. Okay. The American chant should have been drowning out. And some people, man, shout out to the people at the fight who started chanting USA. I mean, shout out to those people, at least, you know, that tried to get Wilder support because the most of them were booing him, man. And don't tell me that a crowd that's mostly American, man, you know, can't, can't must up enough cheers to drown out those UK people, man. Come on. I'm not trying to hear that, man. I'm not trying to hit it. That's a reality. Okay, the Deontay Wilder, man, he fought a hell of a fight. Tyson Fury, they fought, a, they fought a hell of a fight. We still talking about this fight, man. It's seven days later. We still talking about this fight because the fight was that good. Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, they did what they said. They made, they kept their promise to the fans, okay? These two guys said that we're going to, you know, we're, we're going to fight because we both believe that the best fight the best. See, boxing wins. See, the thing of it is with people, man, and all these people running around here, these people, they're trying very, very hard to turn this into a whole race war. They're trying to. They're trying to do everything you see, but Tyson Fury is the wrong candidate. He's the wrong candidate because Tyson Fury don't roll with y'all racists. He don't roll with y'all nationalists. He don't roll with y'all. That's, that, that's why this can't really be turned into a race war. That's why a race war not going to break out over this because Tyson Fury don't have those ideologies. He ain't got them ideologies. That's the reason. I mean, that's the real reason. So the races and the people that's got these ideologies, man, they're pretty much, man, they handcuffed. They can come on and they can say a little certain things. They can say stuff here and there. But, the, but, but they're literally handcuffed. They can't do anything. See, you got to have a fighter, man, who either don't talk on those issues or who just pretty much, man, don't care. And then, see, you can start a race riot. See, like with, with Gennady Golovkin. Triple G ain't never came out and said nothing like racist. But, I mean, he never checked any of those fans either, man. And, and you know, tri come on. Triple G know he got racist fans. He know he do. Okay, I mean, come on. These guys ain't stupid, man. They know who support them. They know who support them. They know who got their back. They know. Okay? And it is what it is, man. See, Tyson Fury knew. Uh, he knew all these races out there. He checked them. Tyson Fury checked them guys early. And he told them straight up, nope. <laughs> Don't I, I don't support racism. See, them guys got handcuffed. They, they handcuffed, so they nothing they can do. But when you get around to the guys like uh, 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 Vasily Lomachenko, like, they ain't going to say nothing, man. So they'll have a horde of, of, of racists following them. And that's what they're going to do. But shout out to the Gypsy King, man, for checking them dudes. Shout out to Deontay Wilder for making a good fight. Uh, ain't no shout out to Teddy Atlas and ain't no shout out to uh, Stephen A. Smith, man, because God, dog. And listening to Stephen A. Smith talk boxing, man, it's almost like, man, you, you about to throw up. You know how you know how you about to throw up and then you can kind of hold it in? Man, God almighty, Stephen A. Smith made me want to throw up. I tried to hold it in, but every time he started talking, I just muted it and then waited for Max and Teddy to talk. But I'm done. What, what are you waiting on? Subscribe.